welcome to Mike Nurichlow Online, sharing my love for people, wine, food, and all things made passionately. Now today's show, something happening in Langley that encompasses all those things, people, wine, food, and all things made passionately. Yes, that's right. There's a wine festival coming to Langley, a big wine festival coming to Langley. This doesn't happen very often out here in the Fraser Valley. All the major wine festivals we have are out in Vancouver. And I love hanging out in Vancouver and all the festivals. Vancouver is an awesome city. But it's pretty cool to have a big wine festival happening in my small little hometown of Langley here. Well, Langley's not that small. But anyway, the Fraser Valley Cork and Keg. There's a link over here to the, this side <laughs> of the video you can click on for the Fraser Valley Cork and Keg. All the information you need there. Did I already mention it's happening September 30th? It's gonna be breweries, wineries, cheese places, chocolate making places, restaurants, all the little things you happen to find at a wine festival just happens to be out here in the Fraser Valley. So much more accessible for everybody out here in the Fraser Valley. Get your tickets, there's early bird pricing on now. Super stoked, you'll see me there. I'm gonna be hanging out, looking forward to a great time. Oh, psst. <laughs> stay tuned to uh, one of my next few episodes. I'm gonna have a, a ticket giveaway, possibly to it. Anyway, stay tuned for that. All right, let's get into today's show. Today's episode, Grey Monk Winery. Now, Grey Monk Winery, you've probably heard of them. We're starting with their Pinot Gris. So you can have a look at their bottle there, 2010 Pinot Gris. Grey Monk Winery is one of the, one of the pioneers of the Okanagan. One of the pioneers of the BC wine world. Um, the Heist family, bought the vineyard or the estate, I think 1972, they've had it for a long time. It's a family run, family owned winery who's consistently been making great value wines for BC and been helping put BC on the map. Anyway, they're one of the, again, one of the pioneers of the BC wine world. And it's very fitting for us to be tasting their Pinot Gris today because the word or their title Grey Monk or their name Grey Monk comes from the great Pinot Gris. Something to do with the Hungarian way or something of saying Pinot Gris sounds kind of like Grey Monk or something like that. Anyway, I don't speak Hungarian. I read that on their website. <laughs> All right, Pinot Gris. I love when I see this in Pinot Gris. Uh, we had the Nickel Pinot Gris on the show not too long ago. Um, they very much allowed the Pinot Gris to extract, um, giving it that kind of pinkish salmon hue color. This one they've just allowed it to extract ever so slightly, so it's got a very deep golden with a hint that was subtlest subtlest hint of pink to it I like that I respect that it's showing off more the true color of the grape variety uh, Pinot Gris if you remember the skins of the grape happened to be kind of a, a bluish purplish gray if you didn't know better you'd think they were a red wine grape but they're actually a white wine, white wine grape and they happen to stain the juice and give it a very ele elegant color so you can press it off right away throw it in stainless and allow it to be a very clear white wine but I really like when they do this, it gives it some character. Let's get into this one. 17 bucks for both of these wines. I'll tell you about the second one in a second. Mmm, smells like BC Pinot Gris. Okay, on the nose. Oh, okay, here we go. If you watched my previous episode of this one, I, I really enjoyed that episode having David Schofield by the garage. Make sure you check that one out. He's an expert on BC wine. He's so excited about BC wine world. Um, this wine, says a lot of what he was saying in that episode as well when it comes to BC wine. It's got a lot of herbal notes happening. That sage note that we covered in the previous episode. There's a lot of sage on the nose of this one. Sage meets kind of lemon peel or lemon zest. I'm going to say a little bit of almost banana. And lots of ripe apple. Lots of ripe apple on this wine. Got a nice nose. It's definitely got kind of those, those green... Ripe green fruits, a hint of tropical to it. But it's got a lot of savoriness to it. A lot of savoriness. I'm smelling some nice minerality to it too. Maybe hints of grapefruit, something along those lines. Ooh, on the palate. What do we taste? Mmm. <laughs> it's a yummy wine. So you can see right away, my natural response to this wine is to take several sips because this is a juicy wine. This wine makes me crave more of itself. Um, it's making my mouth water. It's got a beautiful tart acidity to it. Um, this would work super well with like a nice hard cheese 
or a really, really creamy white pasta of some sort. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Um, coming through on the palate, kind of get that, yeah, definitely uh, lemon lime, but more on the side of lemon. Hints of kind of banana, hints of grapefruit. Definitely, definitely a savory minerality. Um, very juicy wine. A very nice Pinot Gris. I think I've said it in previous episodes. In British Columbia, you better be able to make good Pinot Gris because Pinot Gris does extremely well here. So this is a really nice, sturdy Pinot Gris from Grey Monk. Where should we put this? I don't know if you notice that sound in the background. It's just that buzzing. I have a freezer in the garage and I forget to unplug it once in a while. My bad, whatever. You probably can't even hear it. I'm just rambling now. Yeah, nice Pinot Gris. Where am I going to put this one? It's a good all-around wine. I'm going to say this is good plus. Let's put it that way. It's not like an epic Pinot Gris. It's just a super juicy, fun, approachable, $17 everyday white sipper wine. Chilled, this would be great on the patio. I can't see many people not liking this wine. All your white wine fans are going to like this. It's very approachable, very balanced. Very good plus <laughs> Pinot Gris. All right, second grape variety. This is a grape variety I don't think I've done on the show before. Pinot Auxerrois. I think I'm saying that right, but Pinot Auxerrois. 2010. Um, there's very few producers of this in Canada. The grape, they're not 100% sure of the origins of where the grape came from. Um, it's considered a French grape. Uh, it shares the name of the city uh, in northern Burgundy or the Chablis area, the city called Auxerrois. Um, it's just another part of the Pinot family. Um, tends to be uh, a little bit bigger of a grape variety. What I've found in the past is it's a grassier grape variety, more of a herbal grape variety. I'm very curious to see how um, Grey Monks plays out. But like I said, 17 bucks for both these wines. I'm excited to try this one. Let's get right into it. Ooh, it's got an interesting nose. Very interesting nose. Yeah, I've tasted this one in the past and I've gotten kind of a kind of herbal, grassy character to it. This one has subtle, subtle hints of that, but comes across more like lime. Yeah, I was definitely going to say lime, and there's a hint of something like sweetened rhubarb or something on the nose of this one. Yeah, very interesting. Give me a second here. Yeah, lime. I get, it's weird. There's like, okay, the wine's not weird, but it's it's weird. I'm smelling almost icing sugar, but this is not a sweet style of wine. It's like I'm, it's like someone was baking and using icing sugar um, down the street, and I got a subtle waft of it while I was smelling this wine. That's how subtle it is, but it's there. It's this interesting sweetness on the nose. A little bit floral. Yeah. The nose is, it's not as aromatic as their Pinot Gris. Nose is hiding a little bit. But yeah, kind of that lime meets kiwi, a little bit of hint of sweetness to it. Something in there. Hmm. On the palate. Hmm. I should change the order of these. I probably should have started with this wine. So I'm going to take a few sips. It's a subtle wine. It's a subtle intricate wine. After that wine, it comes across thin, but no, I have to take a few sips to really embrace it. This is a neat wine. I like this. It's juicy as well. Okay, now it's starting to show character. I'm getting some of that lime, kiwi. It's got a lot of honey character. Yeah, some really neat honey character. Bit of kind of lemon melon sort of play in the back end. A little bit on the finish. On the finish, I get a bit of minerality meets kind of a, like I said in the past, a bit of kind of a grassiness, ever so slightly kind of grassiness, but sweetened in a way. It's a very different wine. Um, very approachable wine. Um, this is a, a poultry wine. You'd have this with your chicken. I think I'm having chicken tonight, so I think I'm going to use this. This would go really good with barbecued chicken, um, maybe like a white pasta as well. Um, not quite as bright and juicy and as acidic as that one, but definitely a fun, interesting wine. I gave this one good plus. I'm going to give this one a good. 
It's a good all-around wine, but very, let's go good and interesting. I'm going to go good and interesting on my wine rating system. I like it. I think it's a fun wine. It's different. It's very different, a different variety for BC. Cool. Like I said, 17 bucks for both these wine. Very decent value across the board. Don't forget to check out Fraser Valley Cork and Keg. As soon as this episode ends, like right now, right when it ends, click the click the link to Fraser Valley Cork and Keg. So thank you everybody out there so much for watching today. Do not forget. Wine. Be pretentious sized and click the link.